Hello, Brother Munro here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where I am building a new light cruiser. This is the experimental cruiser hull. We have also unlocked some other things, but we don't have the shipyard capacity to really look into those yet. So, <laughs> I love the name. The Highly Advanced Tower. Hmm, not an advanced tower. A highly advanced tower. Magnificent. Yes, okay. Uh, actually, can we put it down here? We can. That could potentially be interesting. But I'll put it up here for now. I think that's where it's supposed to go. Secondary... Ooh, look at these lovely options. Dual gun tower. Those look fun. Those just look... It's like a tribal class main tower, but backwards and without the actual main tower stuff on it. Nice. I like that. Is there anything unique? I can't remember. Is, is this for spray or is this for gun flash? I can never remember. This little kind of scoop. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. With, I'll just stick a big funnel. Ooh. Oh yes, I like that funnel too. Hmm. Yeah, this is shaping up. Can certainly see this working. Right. Um, how fast was our previous light cruiser design? Thirty. Okay, so make sure we want to be at at, at least that. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. 117% engine efficiency. That's absolutely fine. Uh, gun, why? We could go, Mark. We could go 5 inch. Or we could go 6 inch. She is a light cruiser. I prefer 6 inch. Mind you, it might be tough, tough fitting a pair up the front. Um, if the 6s don't fit, we'll try 5 inch. Make her a destroyer leader. Now you can squeeze. I think you can squeeze a six inch gun in there if you try hard enough. Or not. Alright. Fives it is. She really is going to be a destroyer leader in that case. Hmm. Wow. Seriously, with the forward weight offset. Uh, <laughs> what I might do then... I just... I, I like the look of it. I wonder though... Is there a taller bar? Well, probably, but it's more to do with the chunk. The only other thing I could do would be to try and get the tower down the bottom here. Um, these are going to be smaller than the Suzuya's. Because those are 7,000 tons. These are only going to be five. This is a small destroyer. Uh, a small light like cruiser is basically a destroyer. So, yes. Although, you know what we could do? We could move these back. Allow me to move the funnel back. Uh, I was trying to drag the... Curious if you can be really cheeky with it. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, let's put the. You can have it be cheeky with the barbette. Look at that. <laughs> Outstanding. Now these are thirty nine, so let's let's make them long. And can put a torpedo launcher. Oh, actually, put a double torpedo launcher in. That's eight torpedoes. That's significant. Uh, hey, Kitty Cat, is there a way to hide obsolete ship parts? So, you, if you're in a custom battle, they'll be greyed out. If you're playing a campaign, then obsolete parts will disappear. You can't use them anymore. 5.5s. Yeah, we can do 5.5s. 
boom, there you go. 5.5s. Done. Uh, so yeah, it's for instance, if you go on to the Krupp, I can only choose from Krupp 2, Krupp 3, or Krupp 4. The, all the others I can't see because I'm playing a campaign. If you... 5.9s? Did I put in 5.9s? Oops. That's because I put 5, expecting it to put in 0.5. 0 0.5, there we go. <laughs> Shh, don't tell him. I mean, we could go for 5.9s. Actually, tell you what. Uh, settings, general, millimeters, briefly. Can do weird things like that. So they're 139.7. Uh, 140 minus 139.7. Yeah, if we go for a... So... Oh, no, it just check, tells me here. So 127... Okay, this is the most pleasing, which is the 5.9s. Yeah, the, uh, the 150 millimeter, basically. Yes, 150 mil. There you go. <laughs> so they're basically six inch guns, which is fine. So that I, I'm happy because I get six inch guns. And chat's happy because they get the five inch guns. Perfect. Best of both worlds. Right. <laughs> Build the rest of the ship. Uh, weight should be okay. I reckon I'll need to use at least a soft capped shell. Yeah, soft cap. Perfect. Should go through a destroyer with HE. No problem. Uh, Make them 21 inch torps. Let's bring an extra. Let's bring some extra ammunition. RDF. Sonar set. Rangefinder. Ooh, those are new. It's like four depth charges. Advanced mines. And we have tons of displacement left. I love it when that happens. Um. <laughs> Six inches of armor. Ev uh, yes, everywhere. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, let's go three. I can turn it in six inch brick, but this is the same armor scheme as my other light cruiser. We can have extremely well protected inner systems. We can have those turrets better predicted. Lovely. Hmm. Then we can make a more of a long range radar. So spacious crew. Um, probably maximum bulkheads because it gives you a bit of range too. A pipper range, and that's it pretty much done. Apart from the atrocious forward weight offset. <sighs> I'm not quite sure how to solve that. I've got the engine pretty far back in the ship. If you look at the diagram here, this, is why th this makes no sense to me because all of the engines. <laughs> are behind the white line here that which yeah we seriously need center of buoyancy and center of mass um or center of weight indicators i, ca I can't physically get <laughs> get it any better than that <laughs> uh hey swivel Yes, I know, I know. Uh, my neighbor Tatori is a favorite of uh, my children. Yeah, I like this thing. 
aside from the forward weight offset, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Move the tower down. Yeah, I tried, but... Oh, oh ah, it does fit. <gasps> it fits. It fits, it fits, it fits. Um, I'm going to need the torpedoes back, but... Game doesn't mind putting them up there. <laughs> do, do. Uh, that's kind of balanced around here. Can we get that second launcher in? Yeah, there you go. I've still got a bit of a forward weight offset. We can noodle it. I'm sure we can noodle it. <laughs> that is so weird. I mean, the the one I was originally going to go with looked a lot better, but this is going to perform a lot better because it only has a 4.6% forward weight offset, not a 22%. Ah, I can get it down even more. 1%. <laughs> yes, this ship, ladies and gentlemen, 1% forward weight offset. And I'm kind of pointing the camera at this, the line that you get in the designer. <laughs> what do they fill the front of the hull with? Lead? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Move the torpedoes back. Uh, could do, but they're they're as far back against this break as I can as I can get them. Ram bow, yeah, something like that. Tungsten reinforced. Um. <laughs> Secondary guns, we might be able to shove some secondary guns in. Uh, if there are mounts for them. No. But five inch guns will do fine. Five inch guns will do absolutely fine. I did move the bridge back, but I don't... I think it's just the break in the... Yeah, it's the... It's the... It, the fact that this bit of hull doesn't exist, <laughs> technically. That's why you can see the the towers actually clipping into it. This little section here isn't actually there. It looks like it's there, but it's not. The hull actually ends here in terms of placing stuff. <laughs> Peak performance. <laughs> uh, if you say so, she does look really cool from the front. I will, I will admit that. It does look hilariously interesting from the front. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And then yeah, where where is where is even is the bridge? The bridge is down here. So your view is the back of a torpedo. So the only way you could command the ship is by going up into this uh, gantry up here. <laughs> so, uh, a bridge is well protected, exactly. Yeah, incoming fire from the front. That's not hitting the bridge. It's not gonna hit the primary fire control. Oh dearie me! Just, just got to send an ensign up up to the crow's nest to, so you know where you're going. Um, <laughs> they're forty million, so they're actually cheaper than the Sazias, which is nice. Do 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 do. <laughs> Periscopes. Yeah, yeah, periscope would work. Um, how many should we build? Uh, I think we have... Yeah, we've got six light cruisers currently. And we have 20-ish destroyers. So... Somewhere between four and six seems about right. So let's build five. <laughs> Boom. Now, um, click the add crew button. Let's go do some fighting. Right, chat, you can choose uh, east or west. East has a pathetic Russian squadron running headlong into five capital ships. 
And <laughs> the West has a light cruiser and a destroyer running into uh, two capital ships. So would you like a very lopsided battle or a just a regular lopsided battle? <laughs> the Mononoke, yeah, we can call one of them the Mononoke. East, West, <laughs> chat. I, lo I love chat. It's like the first one's like West, then it's like East. Never ever agree. Always 50 50 split. Uh, can we take Hawaii? Uh, no, not currently, because the game, I'll zoom over to Hawaii, has the provinces from 1890, not any other of any of the other start dates. So Pearl and Hawaii is independent. It's a minor. You can't attack it. So, uh, you know, one of the first things you'll do as a US player in the full game when you can attack minors is you'll probably attack Pearl Harbor. Uh, west, 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 East. Do you know what? We've got a first time chatter. Uh, some random guy. Even better. Perfect. Uh, we, we're going to go. West, and this is where I forget what West is. This one. <laughs> this one. So the Fuso, the Kirishima, the Deku, the Amagi, the Aoi, defending a transport convoy against the Turek, which is not a ship I've seen yet. Nine 4.5 inch guns, singles. Is that a pre is that a protected cruiser? Oh, Russia, are you still using protected cruisers? They have a modern heavy cruiser, because I've seen it. Um, and those of you on YouTube will have seen it already. And this is their paper-thin destroyer that I never got a good look at. But it has fast torpedoes. And cadet cruise. Lovely. Russia, what are you doing? Yep, that's a protected cruiser. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> Just... <laughs> what? What the hell? Um, well, I guess we get... Well, we might get to see our ships in action. Um... Have already had one of these battles be a complete bust because they start really, really far away. They turn around and run away, so we can ex kind of expect that. Could buy a Fuso though. Look at that! Look at that beautiful, stable firing platform. Kirishima has a little bit more pop and bounce to her. But again, super, super stable. Deku has a little pitch, but she's pretty good. Uh, and then we have the destroyers, which are going to be bopping around quite a bit. But not as much as I thought, actually. They are north west apparently okay thank you rdf we'll find you <laughs> i know i know russia what are you what are you up to same old nonsense isn't it yes we have the best most advanced modern technologies uh, do you now you got a like seven thousand ton protected cruiser. I mean, I guess that is unusual, but <laughs> you yeah, cadet cruise, minimum bulkheads, fast torpedoes, single reload, stuff like that. It's just funny. No, we haven't had um, a second second Pacific squadron yet. I'm sure. I'm sure the AI will uh, do its usual doomsday. Where the hell are they? Uh, this way. Must be manoeuvring around. 
We don't have radar yet, so... We're on a times 10, though. So they can't be that far away. But yeah, that is a very stable-looking ship. Yeah, I've got the end battle. I would love to actually, you know, engage... What the hell? To the west now? Did they split up? Okay, destroy as you investigate the west. Everyone else keep going the way you're going. No, I'm on a times 30. I'm just going to end. Ugh. Get rid of these battles. Just... If they're not... If they're going to start so far away when they're supposed to be attacking a convoy, like, they should at least start in visual contact. Or radar contact. Um, because... Not they have radar. But, you know, they should start in visual contact because... <laughs> They don't know that the convoy is protected. Like, they just see a convoy. They're coming out to attack it. It's like, actually attack it. Start them closer. Devs. Wait, the... Didn't I destroy you all? Oh, no, the derped... Uh, I've seen the derped before, but in the battle list, she ran away, so... It's probably going to be another running away. <laughs> Yeah, it's partly to do with their cadet crews. Sorry, having a off mic discussion about what I should say. <laughs> yes. So Mrs. Brother Monroe wants me very much to say she ran away like Cinderella. There you go. Said it. <laughs> yes, I am. And this is an enormous fleet to deploy against, like, a couple of cruisers. So I don't blame them for running away. But it's like... Yeah, just start closer, would you? Mm, 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 mm. They certainly had glass armor! Oh, yes. <laughs> Are they about to turn into pumpkins? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Run away. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. She has appeared on stream once. Um, <laughs> maybe twice? Is it twice now? Possibly. Is that an RDF ping this way? Yeah, it was. Gonna spread out a little bit though. With the fleet, see if we can find them. Once we've identified one of them, we might be able to zero in on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Battleship, do we have Huja? So, this is an Issei. It's the other Issei. Oh, in fact, we have both Isseis. Because that, that has to be Issei back there. Yes, there was. She did do a Taskmaster. Uh, you can search for Conan the Destroyer um, if you want to see that. Because, like a normal person, she thought that a Destroyer was going to be like super powerful and destroy things um, <laughs> not realizing they were tiny
<laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, but I mean, they, they did. Sp like, that's a good point. Uh, Convoy HX 106. But, like, they did actually spot the convoy. Um. Whereas here, they're, they're not even spotting the convoy. They're just seeing smoke. So, if you were... If you were... Um, if you are the Russians, right? You, you're told, go hunt for a convoy. You go where you expect the convoy to be. You see smoke. You close in. Then you discover that the enemy has protected it. And then you run away. You don't magically know <laughs> that that the convoys defended and then run away, um, or if you do, just do it off screen. Just do it on well, not off screen. Do it on this layer. Like yeah, I'll I'll defend the convoy, and then they go, oh, actually withdraw and and piss off. Um, it's it's just slightly irritating. Is all. Why am I saying? Why is it saying I'm at war with Britain? I don't remember being at war with Britain. <laughs> I'm not at war with Britain. What are you on, game? Yeah, this, this panel here. I think they should just get rid of it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> hey, Toby. Uh, don't say things like that. It makes me nervous. Um, I'm hoping to get at least a f five years of gameplay out of this so I can then do a time skip to 1930. But we'll have to see. Uh, who out of me, Stealth, or Spartan has won the most Taskmasters? Uh, I don't know. The correct answer, of course, is the serious strategy gamer. <laughs> um, when he was still doing it, he, he absolutely ruined us. He was really, really good at it. Um, I, th hmm. I don't know. It's probably pretty close between the three of us. Yeah, I, I genuinely don't know. I'd have to go back and like rewatch every every video and every task um how would they what okay um 16 inch mark twos that's good russians running into mines that's also good we're apparently at war with other people now france and spain okay good they both have things that i want uh, namely the Philippines and French Indochina and things like that. So, okay, cool. Uh, right, I reckon both of these are going to be ghosts. And then not... This is the derp again. <laughs> Stupid derp. I might start auto-resolving these if it's just going to do that. Northeast of the home islands. I'll have to check that. It's always tough when you're doing. Uh... Yeah, it's the same. It's the same bunch of bastards. Do you know what? I'm going to use the. AI trick. If you're wondering what I'm pressing, I'm pressing 1 to put it on AI control, which means it'll automatically charge at the enemy. Then 3 to turn off the avoidance, and then 1 to turn off the AI, but it keeps the direction it's going in. And I'm just going to hit times 30 and see what happens. <laughs> Wee. It's nice. I mean, the fleet's basically because I'm using fuel doing this. Damn it! Yeah, uh, the miners invading. All that's still to come. Uh, probably in yeah, patch ten. No one one point ten. Um, yeah, that all looks very, very cool. Um, 
there's still quite a lot of stuff I'd like them to, to fix up with just just what's happening at the moment. Um, I think a few things may oh, no you don't maybe need looked at. You just have to watch that you don't have your ships randomly going in circles, which can happen for reasons I don't fully understand. Bum, 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 bum. See, I don't mind them running away. Like, they absolutely should run away. They just need to start closer. <laughs> and of course, because I don't have radar, I can't actually see where the bastards are. So I have to get into visual range, and it's annoying. They don't have radar either. They should be in visual range at the start of the battle. Uh, no, I don't. I think if you were going to bring carriers into dreadnoughts at all, they would be like submarines. They would kind of be a thing, but they wouldn't appear in battles. Um, basically, they are, and they would work similar to mines. In the, they just kind of have a wee little. What the hell? What is this? <laughs> what is this? You're not on AI control anymore. You can stop doing that. Oh, oh, we found a ship. Maybe going in circles has summoned them. We found something. Yes, we found a light cruiser, the protected cruiser. Kill it. <laughs> yeah, I'd prefer a whole new game that was centered around carriers. Uh, much like Dreadnoughts is the... 3D version of Rule the Waves. It'd be cool if there was a 3D version of Harpoon. Yes, the Japanese enemy ship dance. Where you sail around in circles to summon an enemy ship. Highly effective. I recommend it. Apologies for the crashing sounds in the background. Uh, yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. We might be able to kill a very old protected cruiser. <laughs> With this? Yeah, so tech... Although the, the, the tech finishes at 1940 in Dreadnoughts... Um, you can play to 1950, and it kind of exists in an alternate universe where carriers don't exist. Um, which is how you get giant 100,000 ton plus mega battleships with 20 inch guns. Um, you would not get those with carriers. As soon as you put carriers in the game, if you put them in and they're actually worth building, they're going to completely eclipse your battleships. Completely. And the problem with carriers is carrier design compared to battleship design and cruisers and destroyers and gun cruisers, gun, you know, gunships. It's not very interesting. The biggest flight deck as possible, loads of hangars, maybe some armor if you fancy or not, and big old engines. Because. And you've no real reason to go back and look at them or upgrade them. There's no... You don't care about fire control. You just, what you do care about are the planes. What planes you put on them. So really, what you want is a plane designer. That's far more interesting than designing the carriers. Um, potentially. But a plane designer, that, that's radically different. That's a different game. So, yeah. Make a Ultimate Admiral carriers and missiles <laughs> it'll be amazing I, I i would love that where you're designing missile cruisers and um things like that you'd have nuclear submarines all all these kind of things it'd be a much more complex game because you'd have to fight in a 3d battle space not a 2d battle space um but uh yeah it could could be a really nice Really, whoa, you cheeky sausage. Rude. 
hard to starboard. All stop. Fire your own torps while you're at it. Nice. I might just drift into the damn thing. Although, it's not the fastest torpedo in the world. Nope, all head flank. Just, just enough. There you go. Drifted. Look, <laughs> look at that. It's basically going sideways to Fubuki at this point. Anyway, how much did you pay for this? Yeah, 13 million. This is an ancient protected cruiser that has no business. <laughs> None <laughs> being here. Bom, bom, bom. Yes, carriers do have interesting design, but you would have to. But not if you try and shoehorn them and shoehorn them into the designer that Dreadnoughts has. So I think it's a good decision to not have carriers. But once Dreadnoughts is finished and the dev team's looking for their next project. Carriers? Yeah, that could be a really interesting game. The Turek is hanging on. There are some more torpedoes headed her way. And there's another destroyer squadron on the way as well. Plus the heavier ships. Oh, double dud. Come on. Boo. <laughs> The five inch guns will probably just rip her apart. Yeah. Spot to the north, and we're back to times ten. I don't think I'm going to catch the destroyers or the heavy cruiser, but at least we sunk a light cruiser. <laughs> Good. Excellent. All that, all that fuel and ammunition just to sink a light cruiser. <laughs> hey there, well, very funny. Um, not much, just a couple of ghost ghost fights so far. Yeah, and if carriers were implemented a bit like a mope. <laughs> A bit like you could imagine, like, oh, this is a carrier, but it's mobile and it has a little zone of control. And if enemy ships go into that zone of control, then you can attack them with uh, attack them with planes. And there's an AA. They would work very similar to submarines, very very similar to submarines. And then are they really adding a lot of value? Mm -hmm. Probably not, because you already have submarines doing that. Um, yeah, I'd, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's see if the Russ and the Vitiaz, because these are not far ships, they can only... Oh no, this one is. This one's new, this one's not. Might be able to kill this one. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, player torpedoes will just miss. Always. They'll explode. You might get some duds. But, you know, usually they explode. Usually. And usually, your torpedoes uh, do normal amounts of damage. However, they will never hit. Like, hitting with torpedoes when you're the player is so difficult to do with any form of reliability. The AI on the other hand is excellent at hitting with torpedoes and they get a magic explodey bonus. Like the number of times I've seen a torpedo blow up a battleship is insane. They are so, 
so good at it. It is unreal. Always invest in anti torpedo technology in the campaign. Anyway, it gives us a nice chance to look at Fuso. Look at that. B! An enemy! It's a very fast little bugger. We have ways of dealing with fast, which is more guns! Excellent. <laughs> Come on. Must be loaded now. That's a broadside that never quits. <laughs> uh, there are some torpedoes in the water. But they fired those a little bit haphazardly. Ooh, there's another one. Good hit, though. There's a few more, actually. Unfortunately, these things don't have the world's best steering. Kirishima should be able to help out a little bit, though. Mm, accuracy seems okay. Right. Go this way. Because this one kinked. Torpedoes always... Um, if they do get a coarse kink... They will always go starboard from the torpedo's point of view. Um, uh, looks like the torpedo failed, maybe? Not sure. Let's try and uh, join up with Kirishima. Yeah, this is just a case of actually landing a hit, isn't it? Because, whoa, where the hell did that shell go? Did you see that? It just fired a shell like straight up in the air. <laughs> wow, look at the elevation on that. That's insane. Okay, the destroyers are out of torpedoes, so you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. Try and hit the Russ, which is also out of torpedoes. Excellent. And I'm pretty sure against the DD you can just use the high explosive. Da, 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 da. Oh, 200 bits! Thanks, good what? Yeah, Vicky 3! Yeah, I am playing Vicky 3. Warfare is actually good. I and I completely agree with you. There is a mod on the workshop, and I forget the name of it, but it's pretty obvious which one it is just look at the most subscribed mods that does enable the your your country's AI to build stuff like auto expand stuff it won't build things but it'll auto expand them which helps a lot um, the other thing that kind of bugs me and I'm just gonna wait for a mod to do it is construct what the hell are you doing Fuso uh, the way construction sectors work is confusing um, I think they should be 
they should work like other buildings in that they um you know you don't have to pay <laughs> you shouldn't have to pay for your construction sectors out of your budget your government budget they should be private sector that that makes absolutely no sense to me the net the permanently nationalized construction sectors but I'll, I'll um i'm sure i'll find a and i don't like the fact that they're a special building shouldn't have special magic buildings I know they do a unique thing. What the hell is Fusa doing? I think that's just a graphical thing. <laughs> but look at the elevation on those guns. It's like boom, straight up into the straight off to the moon. <laughs> I don't know how not to go bankrupt and make money. So basically, yeah, it's it's a fine balancing act where if you build too much particularly if you build extra construction sectors you'll go bankrupt which is just st stupid the construction sectors should go bankrupt um <laughs> like it shouldn't be the government the government should not be paying for construction of everything and as well the co the government shouldn't be able to effectively know like say you've got a steel mill right steel mill privately owned steel mill and they want to expand they need if you turn on you can turn on automatic expansion right but by default it's not on um they need not only do they need government permission the government then builds the damn expanded factory for them and gets no money back from it. It's just bizarre how construction sectors work. I think they should uh, rework those. But other than that, yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> and with a combination of mods, I'm able to get around it. So, the yeah, there's the improved automatic building one. And there's a typically for a paradox game there's a cheap menu one and you can just re refund yourself the money that you spent constructing stuff and that's fine and then if you just make sure that your actual budget is positive that makes a lot more sense to me i mean you should have to pay for like i don't know naval bases and stuff but otherwise it makes makes no sense anyway <laughs> It's just me, me moaning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're gonna adjust that. I mean, if you look at Stellaris, which is the other game that Martin, um, the game director of uh, Victoria, was game director of, he wasn't a game director at release. He is, he like Stellaris had a massive rework of a core system like they're, they're certainly not gonna shy about that whoa that's a lot of victory points hot damn <laughs> two and a half thousand from sinking some light cruisers mind you those destroyers i seem to remember quite quite expensive but damn all right uh we're we're positive money again which is good let's let's get our big ships actually looking around projecting some power and yeah really i'm just waiting just waiting for the well the, probably what's happening is the french the russians and the spanish are sending doom stacks to kill me and presu <laughs> presuming that all this activity is is people coming to get me yeah look at this Black Sea Fleet is on the move. The Baltic Fleet is on the move. And, yep, they're doing 2nd Pacific Squadron again. Yeah, they're going to send everything to Koroskov. Koroskov. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> That'll be fun when we see it. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.